Welcome to the Performance Enhancing Podcast. It's like steroids for your brain. A podcast for people looking to live life at their peak potential. Chock full of real world tools and knowledge that you can apply in your life today. By providing you with a lens into the lives, beliefs, practices, and actions of those who are already living extraordinary lives, the Performance Enhancing Podcast will help you shift your mindset or create that change in your daily rituals and habits so you can explode with success in the areas of life that are most important to you. So get ready for another dose of Performance Enhancing Podcast with Satori Prime. Here's your host, Elon Ferdman. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Performance Enhancing Podcast with your host, Elon Ferdman. My guest today, very, very unique gentleman, gentleman by the name of Steve Sims. You may have heard that name thrown around, or you may have heard the name Bluefish thrown around. Uh, Play on actual Dr. Seuss's book, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. But Steve Sims is a lifestyle engineer, or as he says, the Wizard of Oz for people that can afford a lot. A man that followed his passions, found out how to be himself, and created an absolutely outrageous business. I don't want to ruin anything else for you, but I think you guys will A, fall in love with his humor and his passion, and B, what an example of just do you. Uh, And if you do get a chance, I know some of you guys like to listen to this on iTunes in the car, but I think watching this video on YouTube would uh, definitely enhance this interview for you just so you kind of see Steve and when he shares these stories, he's just really, really animated and, and it was really quite amazing. So without any further ado, let's just jump into part one of my interview with Steve Sims. Enjoy. All right, everyone. Welcome back. I'm really, really excited. The guest today, we're probably going to talk about all sorts of stuff, but some of the stories you're going to hear today, both from his personal life and what he's done for others, will probably blow your mind. Uh, So before we go farther into that, please welcome Steve Sims. Welcome to the show, brother. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Well, first first things first, he's got an accent, uh, a pretty sweet (laughs) accent at that. So you guys are going to have to just... Enjoy that for a while. Uh, but why don't we just start with what you've been up to, and we'll talk a little bit about Bluefish, but any other stories and things that you want to share with people of what you've been up to? Um, what, what I've been up to over the last couple of months, couple of years, couple of weeks? Let's, let's, let's go like kind of the, the history of how Steve Sims became um, the man we know today. <laughs> um, I'm a East London boy. The accent's British for you guys that can't work it out. Um, <laughs> so uh, left London, moved to Hong Kong uh, for a job. I arrived on the Saturday. I was fired on the Tuesday. Um, then I started working on the door, throwing parties. Uh, moved from Hong Kong, Bangkok, Geneva, uh, London for a couple of weeks, then Palm Beach, and now I'm in Los Angeles. And basically I get shit done. Um, Last year, uh, just to give you a few of the highlights, last year I got a client married in the Vatican by the Pope. Um, I set up a table for six at the feet of Michelangelo's David and had Andrea Bocelli come in and sing to him during dinner time. Um, And last Friday, um, I spoke at the Pentagon. So that's my little life. Wow. So how you you say like this is what you've done for clients. So for people that don't know, what... I don't even know if it's a profession. What what uh, career do you have? So that's the, that's the toughest thing in the world. People go, oh, what are you doing? Depending on whether or not I like them or not, I'll either tell them to, you know, fuck off. I'll tell them I'm a plumber or <laughs> we tell them what I do. In fact, joking aside, I actually tell people if I don't like them or if I'm in an environment where I don't get, in, where I get into it, I tell them I'm a U-Bend specialist and uh, I'm a plumber that specializes in getting rid of blockage and crack. And so usually three seconds there on, they kind of like walked off and got another drink. So uh, it proves it works. Uh, (laughs) But uh, what I I do is um, I'm a concierge um, by doing things a bit different and weird. So people contact us to plan their travel, but they also contact us to do like that bucket list stuff. So they've seen 
maybe Formula One and they want to drive a Formula One car or they want to have a duet with Lady Gaga or they want to, uh, you know, get married in the Vatican. And yes, it's sort of bucket list and the amazing has really become specialist with us. Um, in fact, for the first time ever, I actually have an easy answer for this because, uh, again, I mentioned I was in the Pentagon and there was a general in there that uh, started off in engineering. And we've always had trouble with saying what we do because people say concierge and they think you work on a desk in a hotel, yeah, flowers and concert tickets. And um, that's sure as shit not what we do. Um, but he turned around and he said, you're a lifestyle engineer. You engineer a better lifestyle. And I thought, I'm going to use that. Um, so I'm, I'm going to actually have to start using that. So I'm a lifestyle engineer and a plumber, but it depends on who I'm talking to. You, you heard it here first, lifestyle engineer. His company, by the way, is called Bluefish. And there's actually a pretty funny story that I heard you mention once about how that name came to be. Yeah, it's um, the simplest things are the most powerful. This, everyone knows that, but we ignore it. We try to overcomplicate shit. Um, I decided I was going to throw a party, but I only wanted to call people at the party. So, you know, some, you can charge someone $1,000, but it doesn't mean you're cool just because you can spend $1,000. So what we did was we used to have... And this was back in Hong Kong. This was back in the late 80s, early 90s, pre-internet. And we used to send a fax out saying, this is the location of the party, and this is the password. And we used to give someone like a slogan. They either had to repeat it or they had to find the answer. And it would be stupid stuff like, name two of the Teletubbies. Or name the, wi- name the lion out of the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. Or finish this sentence, one fish, two fish, red fish. And so we would give you that, and then people would walk up to the front door and they would go, tinky winky po, and we'd go, in you come. And I used to work on the door of my parties, and if some arrogant little shit turned up and went, I'm here for the party, there'd be a whole party kicking off. And I remember once we had a yacht party in Hong Kong, all freaking things popping around like crazy, music's going, women are half naked on the boat, and the guy's like, I'm here for the party, and we're on a gangplank. I'm looking at my buddy and I'm like, no party here, mate. Because he wasn't, he wasn't grounded enough to just come out with the password. He had to try and be all cool on that. We were like, no, no, no. I think there's one just going to vote, mate. If you want to come out and <laughs> piss off and go to that, maybe you'll be good. And then people walk up to us and they would go, bluefish, and we'd say, in you go, enjoy your night. So it was the password. And then after a while, we must have used that password, bluefish, too many times because we had people say, oh, is that that bluefish company? And it wasn't. So we actually invented this company and we tried to come up with this powerful name that made us sound articulate and intelligent and we tried to come up with this beautiful kind of like font and crap. And people were still phoning us up going, is that Bluefish? So <laughs> we're done to all of that and we just became Bluefish. So Amazing. That's, that's how the name came about. Amazing. And I love it. It's because like some of the best things come completely unintentionally and yeah. now it's just a beautiful perfect name with a great little story that most people probably don't even know. No, exactly. And it, me- it meant nothing. And I think that was probably the best thing about it. Because it meant nothing, we could basically invent what it actually stood for. So we not only start off with a name that didn't really mean anything, we actually invented a whole tone um, and industry around it. And so we were one of the first out there to be, to be doing this kind of membership concierge business. And um, it's, it's really worked. Yeah, it's amazing. You have how many people in the in Bluefish right now, or part of Bluefish? Working for us or members? Members. Uh, members just under four thousand worldwide, and we've got uh, representatives and uh, um, teams um, internationally. Yeah, it's it's incredible. If you guys ever go to their website, and you should, just some of the things that they've been able to do for people. It, it's like Steve said, whatever your mind can concoct they actually turn into a reality. And it's just absolutely astounding. Um, what has been, you mentioned a few, but what have been some of like the coolest things that you've been able to accomplish for people? Well, getting the client married in the Vatican was cool, but I've got to admit, set up the table in uh, um, Florence at the feet of Michelangelo's David was something that gave me tingles. Um, it was I, was, I was in Rome doing another gig and I got contacted by this client to do the event in Florence and just asked, you know, I want to go to an exclusive restaurant. And they don't really exist in Florence. So part of our job is to psychoanalyze what people actually want, what they desire, what would make that dream come true. 
Um, and once we kind of like understood what he was trying to achieve, we tried to put something together and everyone just wanted to play. This was all done in two days. Wow. So it was going, it was going at such speed, we were getting zero obstacles. Everything was going through gun ho. Um, and we had the academia saying, yeah, you can take over the whole gallery. Yeah, you want to actually have food in an international renowned museum? Yeah, of course you can. You want to set up a table with lamps, fire? Yeah, no problem. Oh, and you want Andrea Bocelli, the world's most renowned singer? Not that issue. It just happened at such speed that on the Wednesday night, I was sat, uh, and we were sat uh, at the back of Michelangelo's David. There's like a recess, and there's a bench built into the, uh, into the wall. And I'm sat there with Andrea Bocelli, and we're just chatting away. And it suddenly hit me. I'm at the feet of Michelangelo's David chatting away with Andrea Bocelli in Florence. It was just so surreal. And it was one of those things that was happening at such speed that it suddenly hit me like a juggernaut where I was, who I was with, and what I was doing. And that, that was absolutely phenomenal. So that was one of my highlights um, of the past couple of years. But, you know, we had clients wanting to go to the Entourage premiere, movie premieres. We had clients wanting to go to um, the UEFA World Cup um, in Berlin. So we constantly do stuff. Can Film Festival, clients want to go to all of the hot parties. So we organize all of that. So it's constant. I think the beauty about what I do, and I don't have a job, you know, let's be honest, I just... You know, I just have this cool lifestyle. Um, and every week I love to I love to open up my emails because in there there's a nugget. There's some lunatic in there that just goes, <laughs> hey, I really want to do this. And it's a case of, Quack! we can sink our teeth into that and then we start creating just this, this, just this insane moment. And the funny thing is, not to go off topic, when people come to us, they, if they don't know us very well, they'll have a little bit of a dream and they'll give us that little bit of a dream when really they want something bigger, but they're too embarrassed. And we had a client contact us once because he wanted to meet Journey. You know, the rock band yeah, Journey. Yeah. So he wanted to meet them, okay? And then we were like, oh, meeting them was one thing. Hi, how are you doing? I'm so-and-so, you're so-and-so, that's it. Uh, but how about if you jammed with them? Well, how about if you actually went backstage with them? So we took it as far as we could, and he actually sang on stage during a live show, sang four tunes, and he's deemed as the shortest term lead singer of the rock band journey. So wow. he's, he actually sang in front of the entire uh, arena. It was, it was pretty phenomenal. So there's no way we could have taken that any further. Um, but we wow. really enjoy doing that kind of stuff. So I'm the Wizard of Oz for people that can afford a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a really way, good way to say it. Um, <laughs> you know, something occurred to me in the last few times that we spoke that in order to create this kind of business and in order to have these kind of incredible events for people happen you as a person need to have an incredible rolodex and be incredibly connected to so many people uh which makes me believe that your skills around building and maintaining incredible relationships has to be at mastery level yeah it has i didn't realize that um, and you kind of don't want to analyze your secret source. But I realized uh, years ago that, that I actually was quite good at selling the story and, and selling the passion and the way I communicated with people. And I never had a lot of money. So, you know, I was always a little bit kind of, oh, my God, how do I do this? And I would do the usual thing. I would spend you know, 1000 to $5,000 to do a mass email and I'd get a hold of this list and I'd do this. We have had a mass email there and no one would bother coming back to me. And so that failed. And then I'd spend you know, 50 grand on a bunch of magazines doing full page adverts. And all I found was I was just throwing my message at people. I wasn't communicating with them, I was throwing my message at them. Yeah. And then I realized as the years went on and as tele technology came on, technology has advanced the ability for you not to communicate with someone. Yes. It's the anti communicator. And I suddenly realized that, and that's what's ended up me doing a lot of, you know, as you know, speeches and consulting. I teach people to communicate because there's a lot of people out there that think sending a tweet, sending a message, you know, sending a post on a Facebook, you know, making it on Instagram, you're just yelling your message. You're yep. yelling a statement to someone. And if someone's in a really good mood, they're going to take that message and go, oh, yeah, 
that's a, if they're in a pissy mood, they're going to go, oh, what's he trying to say there? You can always incorporate and read multiple ways into any message. You can't do that when someone does something as diabolical as actually pick up a phone and go, hey, John, what did the chat with you about dinner Saturday night? You can't misunderstand that. It's impossible. So I started focusing on how to communicate. And one of the ways that I did it, because A, I was poor, and B, a very inarticulate, uneducated kind of guy, <laughs> which I still am, um, I used to send out postcards. And just so that you know, I'm not kind of making it up. These, these are my pens. That's Sharpies. I think I keep Sharpie in business. All of my letters and postcards are sent in Sharpie. They're usually written diagonally. And they're just things like, John, I've been thinking of you. I'm in France, but when I get back, I'm going to call you. Just let me know that's okay. And my clients get these postcards from all over the world. I also send bar napkins. Uh, I was in, um, and this sounds precocious, but I was in Harry's Bar in Venice, and it's the home of the Bellini. So I grabbed, you know, I had my Sharpie on me, grabbed a bunch of the bar tabs, uh, bar uh, mats, just started writing on them saying, missing you for drinking on your behalf, Steve. And we just literally then put that in an envelope and send it to someone. Now, if you think about your email box, every day we get 2,000 emails where half of them are selling you Viagra, <laughs> half of the, the other third are from women that, that want you to use the Viagra, the other one from your auntie in Nicaragua that died and left you $10 billion. No. Yeah, you've got all of that shit, okay? And there's four emails in there that are worth it. And you've yeah. got to go gold digging to find those four emails. How many letters do you get in your post box each night? Well, oh, yes. hardly yeah. any. Five? I, you know? I mean, yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly. There's not a lot. So if you do something cool, and I did this. This is the table. Can you make that out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. This is the table we did at the feet of Michelangelo's table. It's not Photoshop. This was the real table, all right? So I turned it into a postcard. And on the back, I just do that. I put a line down the middle. I write diagonally. I write the address. I stick a stamp, okay? I don't get the post office to put a mark. I stick a stamp, and usually I'll do it diagonally. So when you get that, you know a real human being. And you'll be amazed. It's cheap. Very cheap. Uh, um, you post that out. Your return on the investment is huge because you get a picture of someone that set up a table at feed Michelangelo's David. You're going to reach out to that person. You send out ten thousand emails. No one's calling you. They're all unsubscribing you, and you're putting you on the spam list. Wow. I just have a quick question here. That you were talking mostly for people that are already your clients. Uh, a lot of people that are listening are probably, they don't have a huge client base or, you know, they'd love to have 4,000 clients, but they have a few and they're looking to grow them. Do you think that strategy works too? Like, what are you using to actually acquire clients? Or are you kind of past that point right now? You never pass that point. Um, you never pass that point and I've never changed the marketing. This isn't something where I've got rich and wealthy and now I'm sitting here and going, oh, this is how I keep it. This is how I started. And bear in mind, you know, I didn't have a lot of money. Now I have a little bit more. Um, but, you know, I'm still doing the same shit. It doesn't change. I have three boxes, okay? Past clients, current clients, future clients. Now, I also have vendors and relationships. Mm. So if I've got past clients, send them a postcard, which will make them current clients. You send your current client a postcard saying, hey, Johnny, thinking of you, uh, we haven't spoken. If you need anything, you know where I am. Uh, and future clients, if you're looking for the best, just reach out. Uh, if you're looking for someone to put up with your shit and call you sir, speak to someone else. Mm -hmm. you know? Just get your tone. The important thing is to get your tone, but use the same postcard. Use the same thing. Because, again, direct mail, everyone goes, oh, that's antiquated, mass market, email, uh, mailing, stuff like that. You can't do that. No, you can't. But send out 100 postcards. Just pick a day in a month where you turn the music up, you go down to your local Papyrus or Target, get a whole bunch of postcards. You want a cheaper idea? Go to a hotel. Walk into a high-class hotel. Even if you live in the area, go and buy yourself a coffee, then walk up to the front desk and say, hey, I'm writing some memos to some of my top clients in the world. I need 100 pieces of stationery, please. 
They will give you that shit and it would have cost you nothing. Wow. Okay? You're now sending it out to people, okay? And then you get that and then all of a sudden, your past client, current client, future client, vendor, business proposition, whatever you want, they get a postcard or a letter from the Four Seasons Beverly Hills. And they're like, who the hell is this? And they open it up and there's a letter in, in there saying, John, we haven't spoken, uh, but I'm going to reach out to you next week. Just want you to know that I'm thinking of you as I write this postcard. And they're like, that's bloody weird, okay? But they haven't forgotten you and they know you. And then you find up and go, oh, did you get a letter? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that I was going to call you or I was going to reach out to Or you email, whatever. But they don't forget that kind of stuff and it's cost you the stamp. Now, if you're staying at the hotel, then you go downstairs and you go, hey, not only have we got stationery, I want you to post it. And they go, oh, sorry, sir, we don't pay for postage. Just to be clear, I'm sending you, I'm sending this letter to 200 of the most influential people in the planet and it's got your logo all over it. So can you reconsider that, please? You'd be surprised how many times they go, okay, sir, because it's free advertising to them, yeah. for that hotel to the market that they want to sell rooms to. So now it's cost you nothing for the ink because you use the pens. Please get a Sharpie. It's always better. Um, you know, it's cost you nothing for the station. It's cost you nothing for the post. I don't know how better budgeted that could be. And no, I have not changed it from having no money to having a little bit more. I still do the exact same thing. I keep it ugly. I keep it real. And I keep it more. Brilliant. And when you first started, who were you sending this off to? Well, this, this is technical, and this is probably very hard to understand, but I, I will you know, try and go into it. Um, people I like. That was it. And I, I, just, I just thought to myself, I want to deal with people I like. So if, there was, if I was reading a magazine, I'd read an article on someone that had just got a job. I thought, that sounds pretty good. Find out where he lives, send him a letter. Wow. And that, and that was it. And that was so it. Now, the thing is, in the early stages, be prepared for a lot of people to scratch their head. But then what happens is you keep doing that and you get someone tell the other person about this, this strange cat that they work with, they send me postcards. Or the other things, we all know, and we get these a lot, okay? Got to give my boy Ari Mizell a big plug in. Yeah. Really cool cat. Um, and Joe Bessina from Spartan, okay? We all know people, you know people as well that write books, okay? These people that write books want to get them into their really cool hands of people that read these books. So when you get to know these kind of people, you say to them, hey, your book's $12.99. Can I buy 50 and you cut me a deal? Or send me 50, I want to send them on to brilliant people, okay? They will send you the books or they will sell them to you cheaper, yep. okay? And then you wrap them in brown butcher's paper, okay? Or out-of-date Christmas paper, or anything like that, and then you send it to them. If you know what football team or sports team they, they, uh, they love, get that wrapping paper, okay? Mm. Send it to them. Now, when you send it to someone you want to do business with, the gatekeepers are usually the secretaries and the PAs, correct? Correct. If it turns up in birthday paper, PA doesn't touch that shit. <laughs> straight over thinking, this is private, okay? Or it's handwritten, okay? If it's got, you know, a typed address on it, but that's a bill, that's a legal letter, that's a business matter. But if that's wrapped up in, I always get a lot of airtime here, um, but if that's wrapped up in, in brown paper, and um, in fact, here you go, say that. Yep. There you go. Just so that you know that I do what I say I do. That's amazing. I, I pay my kids like about five bucks and they wrap a ton of these books up for me. And then this will have, it'd be diagonal and that'll be sent to someone. This one's actually a Seth Godin's purple cow in there. Okay. And that's how it gets sent. And of course I have all this lovely little stamp thing that goes on the back, the little bluefish there. But that's the simplicity of it. Now they're getting a book and people talk to each other. And what you want, the greatest business, um, business circle on the planet is referral business. Now, when you're sending people books, postcards, they talk about it, okay? Mm. And they talk about it with other people that are in their circle. So if you go after one rich person, guess who rich people know? Right. So it's really simple. Just keep it basic, really basic. 
and just keep it really ugly. You can't get much better than just like, you know, brown wrapping paper. And because of this butcher's paper, this is actually cheaper than the pretty stuff they send in pack for us. Do, do you ever put notes inside the books for them? Nine times out of ten, I'll sign the inside. I'll write something in the inside. I don't want to put a little leaflet in there because the leaflet can fall out, okay? But in the front of the book, I'll put in there, Joe, thought of you when I was reading this book, so I bought you a copy. All the best, Steve. Amazing. And it's so simple, isn't it? Don't try to overthink it. Don't overcomplicate it. Just keep it really basic and communicate your tone, your style to that person. Send them a book. And when they get the book, they then contact you and go, thanks for the book. That was a really nice thought. No problem. Oh, by the way, we were going to talk about you sending me money. Let's do that now. So (laughs) you're having that conversation with them, but you've really got got to do it. Now, if they've got kids, send them a kid's book. You know, there is nothing better um, than sending a Dr. Zeus book. Dr. Zeus... Doesn't matter if you're 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 a half a graduate, you're a two year old. Doctor Zeus was a genius, and everyone would read those things. Amazing. Do you leave a number? Do you leave an email address? I mean, you're very connection based, so I'm assuming number. Um, it depends who I'm sending this to. Sometimes I I like to be in control. Okay, I'm a control freak. So nine times out of ten, no. Um, it, I will tell them, hey, I'm going to be reaching out to you next week. Got it. Okay. I'm not going to put my number on there because I don't want a secretary phoning me up saying, oh, he's out of the office for the week, you know? I don't, want to give, I don't want to give you the chance to say no, okay? I'm just letting you know I'm giving you a call next week, and then I call you, okay? But if, I, if it's someone that I'm doing business with, then I will scribble my number on there, or I'll scribble my email address on there, and just say, hey, you know, reach out if you need something, 323, and I'll put the number on there. Brilliant. Absolutely. But if, bro. You look, if you look at the website, well, I'm not going to plug the website, but you know, if you look at any of my websites, I don't actually have phone numbers on there because I don't want people phoning me unless I know them. Yeah. So to your, to your companies, Bluefish, obviously, which we spoke about. The other one, which is more of the marketing kind of project of yours, is Ugly Sims, right? Yeah, I have um, the bluefish.com is the, uh, the luxury, uh, as we've discussed, the lifestyle engineer. Um, and then I... I discovered by complete accident um, that there were loads Again? of other... Again? You know, most of I think, I think if you look at my resume, it just looks like um, he fucked up here, he made an accident here, this went wrong here, and it's just a series of strange events that has turned me into where I am now. And <laughs> I've spent so many of my earlier years trying to be taken seriously that I've got to the point now where I'm not. And I just kind of just, just carry on with it. I told you that guy was something, right? Like, like an energy ball. I loved a few things that he said. One was technology is the anti-communication vehicle. I've said this before. I think people have just been hiding behind technology. And I think what the world is yearning for is people to use technology to actually connect and then go and press hands and actually build those relationships. And I think that was really, really smart. Uh, just amazing tips on relationship building from someone who I really, really think is a master in this arena. So I know we just kind of cut off here about the just do you portion in part two. We're really, really going to delve into that and Steve's take on that. He actually built a whole other company just off of this model uh, in the marketing space. So we'll talk about that as well. So make sure you come back for part two. And like I said before, if you get a chance to watch this on YouTube. I think you'll enjoy it tremendously as well. And uh, I'll just leave you with this, guys. I got a few emails from you already about the mastermind idea that Guy and I were throwing around. So thank you for all of those that replied. For everyone else, if you could, just let us know, is it something that you'd be interested in to get that kind of personal development, mentorship, and coaching from us in any arena of life? We will cover things like how to use fear as your guide in life versus something that you run away from, how to have the most incredible relationships, and ultimately how to create the things that you want most in your life with velocity, I will add. So if all those things sound interesting to you, just let us know if you'd be interested to be in a program that takes you through that process. And if so, what would you be willing to pay for a monthly for that kind of program? All right, and until I see you guys on part two with Steve Sims, have an amazing rest of your week.
Thank you for joining us on this week's Performance Enhancing Podcast. We've taken this pep talk and created a custom action guide so you know exactly what action steps to take now to grow your business. Just head over to satoriprime.com slash podcast and download it for free. Also, please leave a comment and rate this podcast on iTunes. It'll help us get the word out. Thanks for listening. Now, go and implement. We'll see you next time. Did you run through doors till you hit the floor? Did you read my